Happy New Year. This is your Cybersecurity Weekly Roundup. I'm Ali Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. A new bleed style vulnerability is affecting MongoDB, CVE 2025-14847. It has a CVSS score of 8.7 and is being named MongoBleed. It is a client-side exploit of the Zlib compression protocol that allowed unauthenticated heap memory reads. According to Census, it's estimated that there's over 87,000 vulnerable servers in production right now affected by this attack. The team at Aux Security did a full breakdown of the patch MongoDB pushed to production for this vulnerability. They saw that the issue existed specifically in the database's network transport layer. They did a breakdown of the code change. Quote, the fix addresses an issue in the message compressor zlib.cpp file in the line that was originally used to return the size of decompressed data used in the line. This tells the code to return the amount of allocated memory instead of the actual length of the decompressed data. The new line, return length, ensures that only the real length of the decompressed data will be returned. Bad actors can send well-crafted messages to the server claiming a specific size when decompressed. However, the actual message will be a smaller size than expected. The server will allocate a buffer of the expected size. The return information will contain data that existed in the heap memory. This is dangerous because the heap memory can have secrets and other sensitive information initialized into it, but not cleared before the memory space was allocated for the requested decompression buffer. This decompression of the well-crafted messages occurred before authentication, so there is no checking if the request should be able to read old allocated heap memory. The old heap memory can contain PII, secrets, session tokens, and more. Fixes are available now for those who can upgrade their MongoDB versions. If not, they recommend disabling Zlib compression. This story is for the gamers. Rainbow Six Siege was under siege. The Rainbow Six Siege team confirmed via Twitter, I mean X. There was a quote incident affecting the game early Saturday, December 27th, 2025. The game and its internal marketplace were taken offline following the formal statement. Later statements confirmed that there were issues revolving around the game credits and bans. To resolve the issues, they rolled back certain bans as well as rolled back in-game transactions that occurred before a certain period. So what exactly happened? The publisher Ubisoft has not come out with a formal statement of what occurred. However, the Twitter account of the Malware Collective, VX Underground, came out with details. According to the statements written by Smelly, who runs the VX Underground Twitter, there were three incidents that occurred in tandem by unrelated groups at around the same time. First, one group managed to exploit the game to be able to ban players and gift over $339 trillion of in-game currency to players. Second, another group exploited the new Mongo Bleed exploit to get access to Ubisoft's internal Git repos and Xfil internal source code dating all the way back from the 90s. A third, final, unrelated group also used Mongo Bleed to Xfil user data to extort Ubisoft. There's apparently some drama around credits and source code leaking between these different hacking groups, but it's not clear. Most importantly, none of these incidents have been directly confirmed by Ubisoft. In last week's ThreatWire, we covered that a rogue group of internet archivists allegedly downloaded all of Spotify. It's over 300 terabytes of data. They didn't explain exactly how they did it, just that they did it, and that Spotify was looking into this as a major security incident. Spotify confirmed these downloads did happen, however, it was not through any breach of internal systems. Spotify has revealed more info about how this happened through official statements to TechCrunch and the Cyber Express. In a statement to the Cyber Express, quote, they did this through user accounts set up by a third party and not by accessing Spotify's business systems, the spokesperson said, adding that Anna's archive did not contact Spotify before releasing the files. Using stream ripping techniques, Anna's archive was able to scrape Spotify via third party user accounts. In response, Spotify has banned these user accounts. Just because it's the end of the year, it doesn't mean there isn't trending security news. 
A new series of CVEs were found to affect a group of motherboards, leaving them viable to early boot direct memory access attacks. These vulnerabilities caused the UEFI framework to show DMA protection as enabled even if it did not initialize. A vulnerability affecting the LangChain core Python package was found that allowed for serialization injection to take advantage of improper escaping of user-controlled dictionaries. This led to a CVE with a CVSS score of 9.3. A 9.9 .9 CVSS score CVE was discovered in the N8N platform that allows for arbitrary code execution. This CVE stems from poor isolation of execution context from underlying runtime. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of December 29th, 2025. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. As we come into the new year, I want to thank you all so much for another great year of ThreatWire. I know that some of you have started to receive your Wi-Fi pineapple pagers, which I am so excited to hear. Maybe we can do some streams where I am working on learning the ins and outs of how the pager works together, maybe in the new year. But if you got any Hack5 products this Christmas, please tag me on socials because I do want to see and maybe we can include them in the next episode. Or at least if you did get one, let me know in the comments. Speaking of new year, a personal update for me, I will be starting my new job the first full week of 2026. As a reminder, nothing about ThreatWire will change. I am not planning on changing the schedule. It's still going to stay right Monday, publish Wednesday. But I am unsure if I'll be able to get an episode out for the first week of my new job. So if an episode doesn't come out the week of Jan 5th, please don't worry. It's because I'm settling into my new job. As a reminder, ThreatWire is something that I do outside of my full-time job. It's something I do secondarily. And I am super grateful that y'all watch and let me keep doing it. I started ThreatWire working as a software engineer, and I am still doing ThreatWire working as a software engineer. This is just something that I do in addition. I was let go from my job in May, I found a new job, and now I'm starting my new one. And I'm very excited to be writing Golang, so yay. If you want to see how I'm settling into my new job, as well as follow me through my adventures in Berlin for the next week, where I'm going to be celebrating the New Year's, you can find me online everywhere at Ending with Ali. I'll be posting on Instagram, of course, very consistently. I have a lot of content queued up, ready to go. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great new year. And remember, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. Last one of the year. My flight is in seven hours. I'm not packed. Let's do this.